Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. And if this happens to be your very first time to listen, I say a very special welcome and thank you to you. We study God's Word together every day here. Uh, right now, my Bible is sitting open to Psalm 97. If you can, pick up your own copy of God's Word and turn to that passage with me, Psalm 97. And as we go through our time today, I will be encouraging you to get from us a free sample packet of our English gospel tracks. My announcer is going to be giving you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Address, and he'll do that at the end of the broadcast. So have that pen and paper ready to jot down how to contact us. If you cannot stay to the end of the broadcast, then you just jot down this website, would you please? It's BibleTracksInc.org. Org. And I'm saying more about that uh, gospel tracks in the packet here in just a minute. But let me prepare us for our Bible study this way. When I was growing up, we'd sang the hymn that begins this way. Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne. I always loved it when we sang that hymn because we sang it with an upbeat tempo. We never let that song drag. Today, if you and I were to attend an actual coronation ceremony, it would be a joyous and triumphant event. It would not be a time for sullenness or somberness. Well, Psalm 97 is a coronation psalm. Actually, Psalms 95 through 100 are all coronation psalms. But I love here how verse 1 of Psalm 97 ends. It ends with the word gladness. To be sure, when King Jesus returns to rule and reign for his 1,000-year reign upon the earth, the whole earth will be glad. But friend, when you and I personally reaffirm Jesus as king over our life, that ought to be a joyful time. Amen? I have a personal statement that I've written into the margin of my Bible here at Psalm 97. It reads like this. I need the enlightenment that comes from Christ being king of my life. We're going to find when we get to verse 11 of this psalm that there's light sown for the godly. Friend, when I make Christ king of my life, I find the nuggets of light he's laid and left for me. Now tell me, are you in need of some fresh light from God on your own life situations right now? If so, then stay tuned to be part of our study here in Psalm 97. A moment ago, I mentioned those gospel tracts. And by the way, the word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. You'll need it if you're going to go to our website, BibleTracksInc.org. One of the tracts that's in a sample packet I want to give to you is this one entitled, Ready to Die. Ready to Die. This track is a testimony track. It's a testimony of Sergeant James Dunkley. He was a Marine sergeant and then later on an Army sergeant. He died in the service of our country in the Middle East. He was a powerful young man. He, at the age of 14, came up with his own life motto. He was a follower of Christ, and he made this his life motto, ready to die. He came up with his own logo and everything. His logo is actually in this track. This man, James Dunkley, was used to impact hundreds of people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. His life made an impact on them. Friend, if you are looking for a tool to make an impact on the lives of others, here is a gospel tract that will do just that, ready to die. Read it yourself first. 
His life will have an impact on you when you read it, but then give it to somebody who needs Jesus Christ as Savior. Be ready, please, when my announcer gives our contact information at the end of the broadcast. We want to be a partner with you. We have for 80 years, you heard me correct, 80 years we've been publishing gospel tracts and giving them away all over the world, doing it free of charge. We're able to do that because people and local churches take us as one of their missionaries. Would you pray about that and ponder that? Maybe God wants you to be part of uh, our missionary family. Well, if your Bible's open to Psalm 97, look at verses 1 and 2. Here's what the Bible says. Ready? The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitudes of the isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Stop right there, please. In Psalm 97, the 12 verses, I see three basic sections, and here's how I've laid them out. Verses 1 through 7, I've entitled, Let the Earth be glad. Let the earth be glad. Then verses eight and nine, let all Israel be glad. And then we're going to finally see in verses 10 through 12, let all the righteous be glad. Those are the three sections. Let the earth be glad. Let all Israel be glad. And finally, let the righteous be glad. Now, this psalm was used at the dedication ceremony of the second temple. That's the time when the Jews returned from Babylon and they rebuilt the temple for their worship. They went through the proper ceremonies to cleanse the temple once it was built. They cleansed the priest who would be serving there. It was an exciting time. But who the penman was of Psalm 97, nobody knows for sure, but that's really not a big deal at all. What is the big deal here is that these people were back in their land, the temple was rebuilt, and now God could dwell among them once again in the Holy of Holies. But Psalm 97 celebrates that God's presence was with his people. Israel was supposed to be a theocracy, a nation ruled by God, and celebrating the completion of the temple building made the writer of Psalm 97 think of an even greater day, a day when God's rule would not be from inside the Holy of Holies, but it would be from the throne in Jerusalem, and God would personally sit and rule and reign the whole earth. Now, let me use a series of words beginning with the letter P, like in the word potato, to deal with the opening seven verses that are here. If we get through the first one today, we'll be doing well. The first word is the word person, the person person. Verse 1 opens with these two words, the Lord or Jehovah. Jehovah reigneth. The Lord reigneth. Not will reign, not might reign, not someday will reign. This is a present tense statement. It points to a day, though, that will be even greater than merely a day when the temple was dedicated Just because a temple was ready did not mean that every person, every Jewish person, was ready to live a life surrendered to the lordship, the kingship of Messiah. Verses 1 and 2 speak of God's present kingship role in the earth. Before the psalm is over, we're going to see some references to the physical and the in-person rule of God over the earth. At present, though, in the hour that you and I live, we see these basic three things about God's reign at the hour right now that you're listening and you and I are living. The first one is this, that God's rulership brings gladness. This is why every day, my beloved, you and I need to stop and just surrender our hearts anew and afresh and say, king of my life, I crowned you now. Jesus, be king of my life today. That word gladness means to cheer up and to cause rejoicing. That word gladness is a great word there at the end of verse 1. When I was growing up, we sang an old chorus there. We sang a lot of hymns and choruses, but in Sunday school, we sang a chorus that begins this way. Cheer up, ye saints of God. There's nothing to worry about, nothing to make you feel afraid, nothing to make you doubt. Remember, Jesus never fails, so why not trust him and shout? You'll be sorry that you worried in the morning. Well, 
that God reigns ought to bring out gladness in us. But there's something else that comes out here in the second verse. His reign there is a time, a place of darkness. There's a darkness to it. Verse 2 says this, clouds and darkness are round about him. What's that all about? Well, that refers to the fact that you and I can't see God's throne from where we're standing. We can't see his person, his face at this present moment. You and I like it better when we know all that's going on. We like it when God explains himself to us, but God is God. He's not obliged to share with us what he's doing and why he's doing, so we trust him. There is a darkness, a hiddenness, so we got to trust him. Verse 2 goes on to say that righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. Not only is there gladness because God reigns, not only is there a darkness associated with his reign, but there is righteousness that it just overwhelms his reign. God does right, and God brings judgment or the idea of justice because he reigns. Oh, how easily we are prone to think that evil and evil doers are just getting away with, well, sometimes literally murder. We think that they're not getting their just treatment because of all the wickedness they're doing. My friend, what do we learn about God? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I'll repay. Let God write the last chapters on the lives of not just the wicked, but the righteous as well. Because righteousness and judgment are the habitation they dwell, they live at his throne. Who knows, my friend, who knows that perhaps God's reign today and God's seeming slowness to bring that justice on sinners is because he wants us to give that sinner in our life another opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and receive him. Be glad, friend. Remember remember the patience God showed to you and me? Do you remember how slow God was to bring judgment on your life and mine? Oh, some of you got saved later on in life. You were well into your adult years, and man, was God patient with you. But I got saved as a youngster, but God's patience was still with me. I committed sin. I knew it was sin. I thought it was fun to sin. I needed a savior even as a youngster. Friend, God was patient with us. Now, let's use God's patience as a time for you and I to be God's messengers with a message of grace found in the person of Jesus Christ. Friend, are you involved in seeing sinners hear the gospel? That's why we give you gospel tracts. Well, We are going to give you gospel tracts if you let us. Please be ready. As my announcer gives our contact information, let us have your name and address. Let me send you the free sample packet. There's over 40 different gospel tracts. The one in there I mentioned, Ready to Die, is just one. Oh, friend, you and I, let's use the patience. Let's use the time of grace that God is bestowing upon wicked sinners to give them the news and knowledge of the person of Christ especially now at Easter, let's be telling the gospel to lost sinners. That's what God has asked us to do. No, that's what God has commanded us to do. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracts is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTractsInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.